What's going on everybody? In this video, we're talking about using the MacBook Pro inside of Photoshop. So this is my initial first impressions of the MacBook Pro. My full review is gonna be coming later in the week and I just wanted to get some thoughts out. I know everybody's wondering about 4K video editing, everybody's wondering about Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve and Photoshop. So I've ran some initial benchmarks. I wanna get those out to you. I wanna talk about it. I wanna start that conversation and then I wanna know what else you wanna know about these laptops. So make sure you, well, about this laptop. So make sure you drop a comment below. Um, let me know, give me some feedback, let's talk through this, and in the full review, I can even address some of those questions. So this is, like I said, is going to be a first impressions video. I've already ran a lot of the benchmarks, so you're going to get Photoshop scores, um, you're going to get, uh, if you go ahead and watch the other video about Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, I'll link that in the YouTube cards above, um, and you can check out those initial videos. Now this is the 8 gig model, so it's the base model, uh, but I've upgraded the storage to 512 gigs, that's merely for the purpose of running my benchmarks, um, and this is the new MacBook Pro. M1. So without further ado, let's dive right into the Photoshop benchmarks. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open Photoshop, which at first took a while. I was actually kind of surprised. Let me get this set here so you can see it. I was actually finally kind of surprised. It took about seven seconds to open it first, but what I realized is that was the initial open, so I was kind of having to verify um, that I was the owner of this edition of Adobe and Photoshop. So let's go ahead and click this open real quick. One, two, three three, four, about four seconds to open, which is fantastic. Um, it's not the craziest thing to have it Photoshop open very fast, but it is one of those things that's annoying. It's like, I have a computer in 2020. Why does Photoshop take 20 seconds to open? Um, because that's what it used to take when, you know, back in like 2012, when I was a undergrad in graphic design. So I don't want long open times anymore. So the open times are great. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and open a raw file really quickly. So I'm going to head into my files here, pick out a raw file, and pull that open into Premiere Pro. Or Premiere Pro. I was just doing the Premiere Pro test into Photoshop. So there's one raw file. Bam, open. So it opens very quickly. It's very responsive. Um, I have the full benchmarks, that, which I will be listing on the screen right now. I'm going to be doing that in post, so you can check that out. Um, but I'm going to pull them up on the screen for myself here as well, so we can look at these together. Um, I was very impressed with this laptop for a myriad of things. First and foremost, it is very responsive inside of Photoshop. Um, when I'm adjusting elements, there's no lag. It's very quick. It's very responsive. Um, I, it's something that I was really nervous about. Being that this is Apple's first go at the M1 chip, I wasn't sure how I felt about it. I felt, are we going to be a bunch of guinea pigs? Is this beta test going to be, you know, jokes on you? And then they'll make revisions later when they put it in the MacBook Pro 16. Or are we going to see some great performance? Now, I will say right off the bat, the performance is quite incredible. So to open up 100 raw images in Photoshop takes just under 7 seconds. Now, for something powerful like the HP Omen, it takes that exact same time. And the HP Omen has the Ryzen 7 4800H, it has the GTX 1660 Ti, and it had 16 gigs of RAM. All right, let's look at something even more beefy. Um, let's check out the Acer Predator, let's check out the Asus Zephyrus G14. So that did it a little bit faster. So it was able to open up 100 raw images in about 4.5 seconds. That had, again, 16 gigs of RAM, but it had uh, eight cores and 16 threads, whereas the new M1 has eight cores and eight threads. Um, let's go ahead and look at one of my favorite computers that is for Photoshop for video editing, and that's the Asus Rogue Strix G17, a very powerful laptop. And it was able to do the 100 raw images in 3.6 seconds. But that has a dedicated graphics processing unit of 8 gigs of VRAM. That has 64 gigs of RAM. That has the i7-9750H, uh, so 6 cores and 12 threads. Um, so it has less cores, but it has more threads. Very powerful laptop, and this laptop is only 3 seconds behind that. So the M1 is coming out of the gate very impressive. Um, and like I said, you can see these results. I'll make sure these are up on the screen so you can see where they all fit. Now, one thing I wanted to compare, though, is the actual Puget Systems score. So compared to the i5 previous um, generation of the MacBook Pro before the M1 chip, you can still buy it right now, so it's technically not the previous generation, um, but this is the i5 that you can get in the MacBook Pro currently. But the i5 versus the M1. So the i5 was able to get a Photoshop score of 422. That's the Puget Systems score. Again, I'll pull these charts up on the list so you can see. The 
M1 chip was able to get a 565, which is more than 100 points faster. But the crazy thing about that is this computer is about $300 more affordable than the i5 version. So with that in mind, you're getting more performance at less price, less money. Ah, I'm mixing up my words here. Now, one thing I do want to point out, though, is the comparison of, say, for instance, the new 2016 MacBook Pro. And by new, I mean the current model. I don't mean there's another one out with an M1 chip. I just mean the most current model. So the most current MacBook Pro can do the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmarking test with a score of 813. If you're somebody who's working with massively layered Photoshop projects and you have these just huge, huge files, so if you are somebody who's creating massive Photoshop files, who's doing massive 4K video editing files, or even 6K, um, and you have tons of layers, and you have tons of motion graphics, and music, and transitions, you should still go for the MacBook Pro 16. Okay, that's a question I know a lot of people are going to be asking. Is Can this replace the MacBook Pro 16? Um, since it is a $2,200 computer for the base model, which I totally recommend. If you're going to get a MacBook Pro, and you're not doing like 6 or 8K video editing, and just insane, insane motion graphics, get the base model. However, that this does not replace that computer yet, okay? So as you see, you get an 813 out of the MacBook Pro 16, and the M1 is a 565. This would be a great computer for somebody who's just getting started in college and then or just getting into their first job, and they are somebody who's going to be working in Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator. This thing's a beast at that. It will do very well. But if you're somebody who's well into your career, you're starting to get some really complicated projects, you have really intensive and heavy workloads, you have to make sure you deliver on time and your gear isn't slowing you down, then you're still going to be choosing the MacBook Pro 16. Um, at a later date, we will probably be able to switch over. I think this chip will get better and it will go into the MacBook Pro 16 and at that point, it will hopefully dominate the i7-9750 that's currently in the MacBook Pro. But at this point, like I said, I would recommend sticking with a MacBook Pro if you want to be a complex project creator. Keep an eye out for the full review where we're going to be going through every little nook and cranny of the MacBook Pro 13. That will be coming on the channel in the coming week. Um, for now, I really appreciate y'all watching this video. If you're curious about video editing benchmarks, you can click or tap the YouTube cards above and check those out. For the moment, keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. My name is Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you guys here in the next video.